Hi everyone, welcome to another session of Yoga with Joy. Uh, today I will do some crow pose for beginners. So I have a block to help you guys with that. But otherwise it will be usual flow with a lot of nice uh, you know, poses to help us get through the day and the week potentially. All right, let's come to Parvatasana. Have your uh, legs apart in hip distance, prayer pose. Let's come to a deep back bend. Lean back. Touch your thigh if you can. If you want to go further, go for it. Come back the same way. Actually, it's pretty taxing, I would say, to start with it, but a good stretch is good. Especially if it's a back bend. Let's do a gentle back bend again. Now come to fourth pose. Look up. S step or hop back. Up dog. Down dog. One of the thing about yoga. Uh, I think you guys already know, right leg up, right leg forward, come to deep low lunge, stay here for a long breath. It's not really, you know, something that you do for losing weight. Losing weight could be an end result. It's more for like a pain-free life, a wholesome life, you know. In the long term, your metabolism will improve and, you know, you'd see a gain. But yoga is not for like immediate gain. Immediate gain you'd see in your moods and all. Flexibility, left leg up, uh, left leg back to right leg. So yeah, if you're doing yoga and you're thinking, why am I not losing weight? Yoga has a deeper meaning than just like losing weight. Come up one vertebra at a time. Let's do side stretches. You'll be surprised, yet so many celebrities, right side, like swear by it and so many other fit people swear by it. Do uh, Tadasana, basically stretching your whole body and then fold forward. I think even Pilates fall in the same category. All right, step or hop back. Up dog. I actually find Pilates a little bit more difficult. I think I should do more Pilates, but you know, one person can't be good in everything. I found, found yoga is my calling. You can do some funny poses, meaning like just relax in down dog, play with your legs. Okay. Now look in between your hand. You can hop or step forward to come to Utkatasana. We will focus on crow today, so we will we will go to side crow, but just not yet. Now let's try to bring the belly to touch the thigh and then come to a hard fold. Look up. Again step or hop back. Bring yourself up on a count of five, slowly go down. One, two, three, four, five. Up dog. Up dog. All right, let's come to Malasan. So if you're in Malasan, I'm gonna try to get to crow pose. We'll do crow a couple of times today. Um, one of the way I recommend doing crow is you should try bringing your knees under your underarm. You see how my knees are actually on my underarm right now. So you know if you can't get the lift, use a block. I wouldn't say use a book, you know, like we don't want to step feet on book, but any sturdy box that can carry your weight. So this way maybe you can bring your knee on your underarm 
and then just rock here. Maybe you lift one leg, you lift the other leg. Look forward and just maybe lift both legs, right? So the block is just to get that elevation if you feel you're not getting it. Let's practice one more time. One leg up, second leg up, maybe both leg up, right? What helps, what really helps is looking forward. I actually somersaulted on this pose one time, like crushed my nose almost. So for a long time, I was very careful. I would actually put a yoga blanket in front of me. So even if I face palm, you know, it's not so hurtful. But never be afraid to fall out of a pose. So let's try again. This time I'm trying without a block. Let's put the block to the side. Let's try again, one leg at a time, or just rock. So coming here, rock. I prefer leaning on underarm more than upper arm. You can actually bruise your upper arm if you put your knee on it and put so much weight. All right, we'll actually come back to it again. Let's come to all, all fours. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Breathe in, cat. Breathe out, cow. Cat, cow. Let's kick the sky today. So, this is good for your hips as well. If you want that jello butt, kick the sky. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Come to neutral. Other side. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. Come to prep. Uh, child's pose. Again, I have been practicing particularly um, pinch my rasana. So I try to squeeze that in every day a little bit. If you don't want to, you can just stay in dolphin. So you, with that introduction, you already know what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to come to dolphin. You can also come to down dog if you don't feel like you want to do dolphin. Everything is good here. And then just rock your body by rocking. If you notice, I'm trying to bring my torso perpendicular to the floor, right? So that creates a segue for you to do an inversion, right? Okay. do one more time, maybe without the block this time. And you can just stay in dolphin and rock if you want. Nice, come to child's pose. This holding dolphin is actually very advantageous, so do not discard the merit of dolphin. I'll come to a seated pose. My neck is feeling a little weird today. I think baby slept on my arm. 
Yeah, babies have really good life. So, you know, they get to sleep on their mommy's arms and daddy's arms and whatnot. So we are gonna try to get that weird thing out of my neck and also benefit everybody. Get a good neck stretch by holding your ear, stretch this neckline nicely. You attach a little bit of weight with your hand so that it gets a good stretch. Let's do the other side. You know, other thing that's good for neck pain. So since we are here, let's do a little side stretch. I am in um, lotus. But you can be in Sukhasana. Actually, you can, because I'm here, I'm tempted to put hands on either side of my body and then lift up. Come down one more time. If you don't want to do it, maybe add nice spinal twist in this pose instead. I'm going to lift my body up one more time. Again, since we are already seated, why not do some pranayam? Let's add a little alternate nose breath, nostril breathing. So block your right nostril, breathe in for five, hold it for five, breathe out for five. So breathe in, hold, breathe out for five. Now breathe in from that other nostril. Hold, breathe out, let's repeat it one more time, actually alternate nostril breathing feels very nice for me, I feel like my breathing or like I, I feel more invigorated, getting more oxygen, let's try it one more time, breathe in for five, hold, Breathe out. Breathe in for five. Hold. Breathe out for five. Very cool. I'm going to focus on um, crow pose today as I mentioned. So we're going to go back to crow again. So come to if you ask me what are, good, uh, what are crows good for, they're good for like opening up hips and also engaging your core. So if you're working on either, crow is a great pose. At the same time, it works great on your arms because you know, you end up carrying your entire weight on your arms. Um, so you know, like this is how you, I get to at least tone my arms in yoga. This and then doing planks and um, push-ups. So anyway, we are in a um, nice deep malasan. If this is hard, you can always sit on something. But this is actually not super hard for me, so I'll stay here. Again, for beginners, I was showing, you can use a block to get that initial elevation to put your knees on underarms and then lift one leg at a time. You can also rock or you can lift both legs. Great. Let's do one more time without the block. Again, you can just rock here back and forth. Lift one leg, lift the second leg. And one of the tricks to be able to find balance is looking forward. Instead of looking down, look forward. Right? That felt amazing. Now, we will implement some more crows, so as I promised, I'll do some side crows as well. 
again if cruise is not your thing don't let that stop you you add other poses say while i'm doing crow you can do one more round of up dog down dog flow or you can try just lifting one leg in crow now we're in down dog right leg up right leg forward i'm gonna show coming to half moon pose with a block even if you're a advanced yogi try that like the postures are really good if you actually use blocks and straps that's actually the basic of iyengar yoga where you use props to get to the perfect shape the goal of iyengar yoga come to a high lunge is not that you know everybody needs to have the same journey but technically all of us could get to the perfect position with help of some prop so i, I really enjoy iyengar yoga so yeah we are in high lunge warrior two reverse warrior side angle from side angle let's come to half moon so if you use a block you can actually come to a perfect half moon where your body is perfectly facing the longer side of the mat and you're holding a very nice t shape where your bottom foot is pointing straight to the narrow end of the mat this is actually very nice so even if you can keep balance sometimes try with props it could be more beneficial sometimes so we are in chapasan holding our leg behind and then let's come to plank down down right leg up right leg forward high lunge warrior 2 mm I think I should have done left leg. So, yeah. Left leg forward, but yeah, you guys can do warrior 2, reverse warrior, side angle. Triangle to half moon. with a block you can good, get a really good posture bound half moon back to plank down down one of my favorite flow nowadays has been to vasasthasana and then transition to um ardha ardha or full hanumanasana from there so i get this way but you can do one by one so it's come to vasasthasana however you want to which is stacking your leg or getting support anything goes i actually like extending my leg because then i'll bring it straight to come to and one asana so you can come to ardra which is like this and stay here i feel like going for a full hanuman asana so i'll do that nice gently come out i'm going to add a back bend here so ustrasan This is also something actually recently I've learned that in Ustrasan you can target to touch your opposite leg but still keep the rotation very symmetric that gives a nice back bend as well 
So I'm touching my left heel, actually right heel with left hand. Coming back gently. We'll do the other side. And you can do none of them and just put your hand on your lower back and see. Now coming to Vasistasana on the other side. So I think I did this side, so I'll do this side now. So come to Vasistasana. However you want, again, stacking your leg, getting support opening up in star or holding your big toe and then stepping forward to come to either half anumanasana or full anumanasana. out gently be careful not to hurt anything I don't know how time flies to be honest we don't have so much time maybe five to seven minutes I did want to show side crows since I promised in the beginning let's do that come to down dog look in between your hand and then step or hop to come to chair pose In chair pose, come to um, chair rotation or chair prayer, twisted prayer in chair. What a rhyme, right? Twisted prayer in chair. All right. And then you can maybe open your arms as well. You can bind. If all these are like, yeah, I can do all that. Maybe you can sit with your legs closed and arms in chaturanga pose to try to I don't know if you guys can see me properly probably you can so my arms would be in chaturanga arms I will be carrying my weight by my upper arm coming across my upper thigh off if I'm facing right side the right leg what is the secret here is holding your core really tightly right so coming back to neutral actually I want to do the other side like left side so coming to prayer side on this you can open up you can bind and then um, if you did that, come to, I think I need to go this way, uh, put your arms as if you're going to do push up, your legs are glued together, engage your core, make them really tight and then lift up. One more time. Now come to a seated position, come to a nice boat pose, you know legs can be folded or extended. Then come to Badaganasana, open your chest and recline to come to Sutta Badaganasana. back. Let's do some spinal twist. Look. Come 
come face forward, spinal twist. Very nice. At least I feel very nice. I am hoping you guys feel good too. All right. Um, do we want to do, maybe we want to do Marichyasana. So hold your one leg, hold it in a bind, and you can just stop here. If you have more room, come fold forward in Marichyasana. Come back up. Extend the other leg. You can come to Marichyasana like this and then fold. If you're in Marichyasana, can you lift your leg with your hand support and then let the hand go? Nice. We didn't do it on the other side. Let's try that. So again, you're as if you're in Marichyasana. And then support up your hand, lift this leg. And bring your hand in prayer pose. Nice. OK. We're going to cool down now. Come to a bridge pose. Keeping back support um, or like supported bridge. Then extend one leg, extend the other leg, extend both legs. Come down and come down. I'm gonna do one more round of bridge. I'm gonna aim for a lower back release. That is nice. Just lower back release. Feels excellent. You can just fold either a bridge or full wheel. We're gonna now slow down, so come to a gentle inversion. Then let's do supine twist. By letting your leg fall on one side. And you look the opposite side. Not a bad view, huh? Coming back. Spinal, sorry, uh, supine rotation on the other side. Come back. Um, Babe. Happy baby pose. <laughs> Extend your legs if you can, which I can't very well right now because I'm against the wall. <sighs> Come to Savasan or corpse pose. Come to your favorite side to be in fetal pose. Oh. Come to Sukhasana. Breathe in. Breathe out. I like closing my practice with Om, so I'll do that. Breathe in. Oh. Thank you, everybody. See you guys tomorrow.